Okay, so good afternoon, class. So we come now to the part two of the topic in power plant engineering. So this is fuels and combustion. So last time we already discussed some definitions and terms involved in fuels and combustion. So we already uh, discussed specific gravity and degree VI and other uh, definitions. Okay, so let us now come to the viscosity. Okay, so viscosity, so this is a measure of the resistance of the fuel to flow. Okay, so measure of resistance to flow. So meaning, so as the oil may be uh, flow inside a pipe uh, the tendency of the oil which is uh, <coughs> flowing at the surface of the pipe is slower as compared to the part of the oil flowing at the center of the pipe okay so the more the viscosity rating of the uh, fuel or oil, the more the, vis the viscous the oil. Okay? So we have here two types of viscosity. So one is the so-called absolute viscosity. So what is this absolute viscosity? So this is defined as the unit of force required to move one layer of fluid at unit relative velocity to another layer of fluid which is at unit distance from the first okay so as what i have said so the liquid or the oil moving uh, in a surface is slower as compared to the oil flowing at the center of the pipe okay so the kinematic viscosity so this is defined as the ratio of absolute viscosity divided by its its density so they're knowing the absolute viscosity and then divide it by the density we now obtain the so-called kinematic viscosity so what are those units are uh, used in this viscosity so for absolute viscosity we have the rhine so this is in english so rhine is pound second per square inch and another we have the poise unit so this is in cgs so that is dine second per centimeter square or pascal seconds okay so for kinematic viscosity we have a unit of stock okay so one stock is equivalent to one centimeter square per seconds okay that is equivalent to 0 0.0001 square meter per second so take note the commonly used units here is the centipoise and centi stocks okay so another we have the Seibolt viscosimeter. So this are or this is the instrument used in order to uh, identify the viscosity. Okay, so this measures the time required for a given quantity of oil at standard temperature to flow through a specified tube or orifice. Okay, so determining the time. So another we have the SSU or the Seibolt Second Universal. So obtained by timing the interval required for a 60 cubic centimeter of oil to flow through tube or pass through a standard orifice. Okay, take note 60 ml or 60 cc of oil. That is the standard. Uh, 
oil which is required for testing okay so we have here conversion for synthes stocks so that is 0.308 ssu or the cyborg second universal minus 26 or we have here the viscosity equivalent to 0.22 SSU or the standard second universal minus 180 over SSU. So that is defined in synthy stocks. Okay. Another is we have the Seibold second furul. Okay. So unit used for very viscous liquid. Take note, very viscous liquid. Or another, we have here 62 SSF is equals to 600. SSU. That is another conversion of the viscosity. Okay. So we have here the properties of oil. Okay. One is plus point. So what is plus point? The temperature at which oil gives of vapor that burns temporarily when ignited. Okay. Gives of vapor. So when ignited, the vapor will temporarily burn. Okay. Another is the definition of plus point. So this is the temperature to which oil must be heated to give up sufficient vapor to form an inflammable mixture with air. Okay. Another definition: the temperature at which ignition of the fuel vapors. Rising above the heated oil will occur when exposed to an open flame. Okay. Another we have fire point. So fire point is the temperature at which oil gives off vapor that burns continuously. Take note, continuously when ignited. Okay. So from the word fire point. Okay, fire continuously. When ignited, another is four point. So this is the temperature at which oil will no longer pour freely, or the temperature at which oil will solidify. Okay. Another is drafting point, temperature at which grease melts. Another is cloud point, the temperature at which the paraffin elements separate from oil. Another we have the Conradson number or carbon residue. So this is the carbonaceous residue remaining after destructive distillation expressed in percentage by weight of the original sample. Okay. So another we have the viscosity index. It indicates the relative change in viscosity of an oil for a given temperature change. Another is octane number, the ignition quality rating of Gasoline ignition quality rating of gasoline. Okay, so which is the percentage of volume of ice octane in a mixture of ice octane and heptanes that matches the gasoline in antinac quality. Okay, another is the number. So this is for diesel. So the ignition quality rating of diesel, which is the percentage of cetane and the standard fuel. Okay. Another we have the aniline point. So it's the temperature where equal parts of oil and aniline will dissolve in its other. Another is volatility. So it's the ability of a liquid fuel to change into vapor, which is manifested in the temperature range at which various portions of the fuel are vaporized. And then we have here now the composition of fuels. Okay, so paraffins. That is CN H2N plus two. So take note, this is for hydrocarbon fuels. So saturated hydrocarbons, very stable and characters. Another is the olefins. Okay, this is C2H. 2N, okay. So unsaturated hydrocarbon. So characterized, ah, characterized by the presence of a double bond between carbon atoms. So take note. If we look at the formula, so the ah, 
the number of uh, atoms in carbon is doubled in the hydrogen. Okay? So, another is diolipins. Okay? So, that is Cn H2N minus 2. So, less saturated than olipins. Okay? Another. So, we have here the analysis of fuel. So, analysis of the composition of fuel. So, we have here. So, actually, this uh, analysis is divided into two. We have the proximate analysis and the other is the ultimate analysis. So, what is a proximate analysis? Okay. Proximate analysis is made by heating the coal until it decomposes successively in the three of the four complex items of proximate analysis. Okay. So, the four is found by the elements by the difference. So, a typical proximate analysis of coal determines the percentage of moisture. Okay. Take note. Percentage of moisture, volatile matter, fixed carbon, and ash. So, this only defines four. Okay. One is the fixed carbon, volatile matter, moisture, and ash. Anyway, so let us divide the, or define this uh, for constituents. So, Moisture, okay. So, this is determined by subjecting a 1 gram sample of coal to a temperature of 220 degrees Fahrenheit to 230 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of exactly 1 hour, okay. So, that is uh, determining how you are going to get the amount of moisture in a carbon sample, okay. Another is the volatile matter. So, consists of hydrogen and certain hydrogen carbon compounds that can be removed from the coal merely by heating it. Okay? Another is us. It's per performed by heating the same uh, sample of coal used in the moisture determination to a temperature of 1,290 to 1,380 degrees Fahrenheit in an uncovered crucible. So, with good air circulation until the coal is completely burned. Okay? Another is the fixed carbon. So, it's the difference between between the sum of the percentage of moisture as and the volatile matter. Of course, the complete sample is equivalent to 100. 100% less the percentage of moisture as and the volatile matter. Okay. Another, we have the ultimate analysis. So, this defines everything. Okay? So, analysis of composition of fuel which gives on mass basis. Take note, mass basis, the relative amounts of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, as and moisture. So, any elements involved and the fuel uh, is defined here in ultimate analysis. Okay, so let's now go to the basis of reporting analysis. One is as received or as fired. Two is dry or moisture free. Three is moisture and as free or combustible. Moisture as and sulfur free. Anyway, so in other uh, in the other presentation we are going to take an example of this so in order for us to be familiarized with the reports of the analysis of the coal okay another is the heating values of fuel or calorific values so this is also divided into two so one is the higher heating value or gross calorific value and the lower heating value or the net calorific value. So, what is a higher heating value? The heating value obtained when the water and the product of combustion is in liquid state. Take note, higher heating value, the water uh, and the product of combustion is taken 
in a liquid state. So, but for lower heating value, the water and the product of combustion considered is in a vapor state. Okay? So take note of the difference between the higher heating value and the lower heating value of the fuel. Okay. So let us now go to the uh, methods of determining the heating values. Okay. So anyway, there are two. Okay. So we have here the bump calorimeter. So of course, this is used for solid and liquid fuels and the gas calorimeter for the gaseous fuel. And we have here the formula or the Dolong's formula. This is an empirical formula used for determining the ultimate analysis of fuel. So take note, higher heating value. Okay, Higher heating value is 33,820. So take note, this 33,820 is the heating value of pure carbon. Okay. Multiplied by, so this is multiplied by C here. So it was omitted. Plus 144,212. This is the heating value of a pure hydrogen. So minus our hydrogen minus oxygen over 8. So of course the oxygen is subtracted uh, subtracted rather because it is not combustible okay so plus 9304s or sulfur okay so take note that the unit of this formula is in kilojoules per kilogram and then changing this to uh, english units of course 33820 so this is uh, making this in BTU per pound. So, divide this by 2.205 and 1.055. The result is 14,600. Uh, same as with 144212. Dividing this by 2.205 and 1.055. So, that is 62,000. Okay. So, this is now in BTU per BTU per pounds. Okay. Okay. So we have also here for ASME. Okay. American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Okay. ASME formula. So we have here also the heating value. So this is in terms of the degree API. So this is formula for Petroleum products. Okay. So, this is 41,130 plus 139.6 degree EVI. So, this is kilojoules per kilogram or in English that is 17,680 plus 60 multiplied by degree EPI. Take note class, the original formula here is the English units which is BTU per pound. So, this 41,130 plus 139.6 is derived from this English formula here below. Okay. So another we have here for the Bureau of Standards. So we have here the higher heating value is equals to 51,716 minus 8793. Take note class that the parameter considered here, here is the uh, specific gravity. Okay. So take note if only the specific gravity is known. Use this Bureau of Standard Formula. Okay, so this is in kilojoules per kilogram. And then, that is, we have here also below, the formula for English units. Okay? So, let us now uh, consider the difference between the higher and lower heating values. Okay? So, the difference between higher and the lower heating values is equals to 9 multiplied by hydrogen multiplied by 2 per porto. So this is in SI units and in English HHB minus LHB is equals to 9 H and then changing 2 per porto to, to English and BTU per pound so that is 1050. Okay? 
So where this uh, nine hydrogen here is the pounds of ki or kilogram of water form per pound or kilogram of fuel burned. Okay. And two for for two, of course, this is the latent heat of vaporization of water, and H two is equals to twenty six minus fifteen multiplied by the specific gravity. This is now in percentage by weight. Okay. So we have now here the composition of air and molecular weights. Okay. So, we have here composition by weight. So, that is 76.8% nitrogen, 23.2% oxygen. Take note, this is the composition of air. Okay? So, that is equivalent to 76.8 divided by 23.2. That is 3.3 .3 pound of nitrogen per pound of oxygen so another we have here by volume so this is 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen okay so or the ratio of this is equivalent to 3.76 moles of nitrogen per moles of oxygen take note class this is very important in uh, balancing of equation and combustion of fuels okay so another we have here the molecular weights take note for air that is 29 or 28.97 kilogram per kilogram mole okay so use 29 okay here so round off the values 28.97 and then the molecular weight of carbon so that is 12 so that is 12 kilogram per kilogram mole and for hydrogen this is one so multiplied by two that is two kilogram per kilogram mole another is oxygen 16 and then times two we have here 16 times two is 32 kilogram per kilogram mole and for nitrogen we have here 14 multiplied by two is 28 and for sulfur we have a value of 32 So, we have now here the air fuel ratio or the theoretical air fuel ratio. So, take note. So, determining the theoretical air fuel ratio if the ultimate analysis of the fuels are known. Okay? So, this is 11.53 meaning if you are going to burn a pure carbon, it requires 11.53 parts of uh, oxygen, rather. Okay? So, that is WTA or the theoretical air fuel ratio is 11.53 carbon plus 34.36 or sometimes they use 34.5 and then this is sometimes 11.5. And then multiplied by hydrogen minus oxygen over 8 plus 4.29 sometimes or 4.3 sulfur. Okay? So take note, WT is the theoretical air fuel ratio in pounds per pound or kilogram per kilogram. Okay? C is carbon, H2 is hydrogen, O2 is oxygen, and S is for sulfur. Okay? So, another we have here, the actual air fuel ratio. Okay? So, actual. So, take note. We are only going to multiply the theoretical air fuel ratio plus, uh, multiplied by 1 plus the excess air given. Okay? E. So, that is now the actual air fuel ratio. Thank you very much, class. Actually, we now already discussed several formulas which is very important in calculating fuels and combustion. Okay?
so thank you very much class